Hello and welcome back. Today I want to do something just a little bit different. So I'm a child of the 80s. I was born in the early 80s and as such I am a big fan of the Indiana Jones series. Now let me be clear I am specifically talking about the first three movies not so much the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull like they kind of lost me with that one but I really like the original three. So I thought it'd be really kind of neat to go through what Indiana Jones character wears and break it down piece by piece because like most characters, he's really defined by what he wears. And the silhouette of Indiana Jones is very recognizable. You see the fedora, you see the leather jacket, the bull whip. He just has a very specific look. And I think most of that is characterized in his hat, but the full package is what really makes the Indiana Jones character. Let's start at the bottom with the shoes. Now there's actually a really interesting story when it comes to Indiana Jones boots. The costume designer originally wanted him to wear red wing boots. But Harrison Ford was such a big fan of the company Alden, made in Massachusetts, uh, excellent footwear, and he was a big fan of them because of his days as a carpenter that he wanted to wear specifically the 405 in brown. That's what he wanted to wear and it became the Indiana Jones boot. As a matter of fact, even now this boot is known as the Indy unofficially and it's still for sale all these years later. So it's the Alden 405 and it's on the True Balance last. This is also known as the Indie Boot, as I mentioned, but unfortunately, the original color isn't available. They do go through different shades of leather. Of course, what's available, they offer different ones at different times. It's hard to find that original brown color, but the Alden Indie or the Alden 405 on the True Balance last is what Indiana Jones wore for boots. It will come as no surprise that most of what Indiana Jones is wearing is military based. And the pants are no different. What he's wearing is a World War II era twill trouser with single pleats in the front and flap pockets in the rear. And these are in a khaki color. Now it can be difficult to get a good look at what Indiana Jones is wearing for pants because he wears a lot of accessories. He has a gun belt, he has his bull whip. And on top of all that, he has a leather jacket that he wears over the top. So it's very hard to get a look. However, there are a few good shots where you can really see what he's wearing for pants. As for the shirt, Indiana Jones is wearing a safari field shirt with epaulets and two strips of fabric running down the front over each pocket. Now what's really interesting about this shirt is that it appears to be a sort of stone gray color and it seems to change a little bit depending on which movie you're watching. The interesting thing about this shirt is that he will dress it up with a bow tie as he did in Temple of Doom or he will also use a normal long tie which he's worn in The Last Crusade. So this is a shirt that really takes a beating throughout these movies. If you watch, you see at one point he loses a sleeve and typically by the end of these movies, it's completely open, destroyed. I don't know, he's got a closet full of these things, I guess, because he always has a fresh new one to go for the next movie. But this is the shirt that he wears and it's very interesting how versatile he makes it from dressed up with a tie to completely ripped when he's on a bridge hanging over a river somewhere. All right, on to some of the really good stuff. The leather jacket that Indiana Jones wears is one of the most iconic things about him. It's really a big part of his overall look. So what he's wearing again is military based. He's wearing an A2 type military jacket. However, his jacket has a couple of differences you will not see on the military issued versions. Probably the most obvious difference is that it doesn't have knit cuffs or a hem, which you will see on the military issued A2 jackets. This also does not have epaulets. So it's a little bit different there, but the differences don't stop there. If you turn him around, if you look on the back, in order to do all those crazy action sequences where he's hanging around underneath the truck or jumping or grabbing onto things, they've given his jacket an action back with gussets. So he's able to really have a great range of movement. Furthermore, along the side, down the bottom, he has side cinches, which are usually shown pulled tight to kind of give him a little bit more of a form fit because the original A2s were sort of boxy fitting. You gotta remember, these weren't tailored garments these were meant for pilots to wear so these were not bespoke slim fitting garments by any means this is probably the way they got around it so his jacket is just a little bit different from the military issue version now if you want to buy one of these jackets probably the best place to get one is US wings they have an absolutely beautiful reproduction of this it looks to be made out of some very nice materials I have never seen one or, or felt it for myself so I really can't speak to the quality however everything I see on the uh, website looks great you can have this one for $549, which is a pretty good bargain in the world of leather jackets. Now, if you want to go with one of the original makers, I would suggest going with Wested. 
And Wested offers several different versions depending on which movie you want yours to be from, all the way from Raiders of the Lost Ark up through Temple of Doom because each of them is just a tad different and they offer these for $250. I'm a bit skeptical about that company because that's a very low price for a made in England jacket. So I'm wondering how they got it that low. I've never seen one in person, so I may be completely off base, but that's a pretty low price for what could be a very high quality leather jacket. I just don't know. So those are two options if you're really interested in getting the Indiana Jones type jacket. Now, of course, Indiana Jones would not be Indiana Jones without his hat. So his hat is actually a Herbert Johnson of Savile Row model called The Poet, and it's actually based on an Australian model that they had. And this hat has changed, again, and throughout the movies, it's been slightly different, but what you'll notice about it is that it has a very tall crown. It's a tall hat, almost Western looking. Now, Indy's hat is brown throughout most of these movies, except for one scene where he's traveling. He actually has a gray fedora in the same cut, the same model, when he's on the train. So it's a really interesting thing because for a while, I know in forums, people were arguing whether this was a different version. And it's been confirmed that that actually is a slightly different version in gray. And uh, so that's one of probably the most rare indie hats you could get. Now, there are plenty of places that offer Indiana Jones hats. And you can get them anywhere from what really is just a costume all the way up to a nice bespoke version. And that's what I'm gonna suggest you get because if you want the real deal, uh, something made out of some really nice stuff like uh, beaver felt. Well, the best place to go is the Penman Hat Company. They offer three different styles depending on which movie you want it from, and they're $525. I know that's not cheap. However, you are getting what you pay for. If you want the real deal, something you're actually gonna wear, this is the way to go. And finally, we have to talk about his accessories. Now, as I mentioned before, he does wear a black bow tie and a black necktie. However, on top of that, he's also wearing a brown web belt with a brass buckle. He has an olive drab British gas mask bag with a leather strap. Now, this is kind of interesting because I think what they probably did is they picked something up at a surplus shop changed out the normal webbed strap for a leather version. And this is what he wears across his body. So it's also a very, a very important key element to his look. And uh, there's a couple of different places you can get this bag if you're really interested in it. There are reproduction versions available. Of course, you can go and check out military surplus places and get the real deal. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more high quality, I would suggest taking a look at the Filson small field bag for about $250. This has the leather strap, so you don't have to change it out. And of course, it's Filson, so great quality, made in America kind of stuff. And I also know that the Mountain Back Division of Saddleback offers an Indiana gear bag for $265. However, this version comes with the canvas strap and the closure is kind of funky. So take a look at it and see if it's something you're interested in before you go and buy it. It's a little more stylized than the Filson version. Todd's Costumes has a true to original movie version for $47. So if you're looking for the actual thing that he used instead of something that's from a surplus shop as, as far as a reproduction goes, you can check out Todd's Costumes and uh, get one for under 50 bucks. And of course, we can't forget that bullwhip. Now, this was a custom piece from David Morgan. It's a kangaroo hide bullwhip. I really don't know anything at all about bullwhips. I don't know where you would really use one. However, I'm sure there are plenty of people who are really into it. So I would suggest just doing a Google search if you're interested in getting a bullwhip and be really careful because those things look like they hurt if you get smacked by one. So if you're just in the bullwhip, that's what he's got. So that's kind of the breakdown of the Indiana Jones style. Now, I would never suggest putting all of these things together because you're going to look like you're going to a costume party. Unless you're going to a costume party, then you can. But I would suggest taking little pieces and putting them together or maybe one at a time because otherwise you really just look like you're trying to play the character. So there are definitely some cool things to be taken into consideration here that the fact that he uses a lot of military style gear and the idea of masculinity and that's our hero and that's his look. It, it sort of shows you a lot about what they're trying to convey through his clothing to the viewer. And this is a very successful franchise, probably one of the most recognizable silhouettes in movie history. It's, it's a very interesting thing to look at the science and the psychology behind costume design and why they did what they did. This has been a lot of fun to do. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anybody else you're interested in seeing their style kind of broken down, please let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. And I will see you next Thursday.